Welcome to uh, another webinar from Oxygen Forensics. Uh, I'm Lee Reber, and uh, we're going to walk through Oxygen Forensic Jet Engine and uh, talk a little bit about Jet Engine, and then get into uh, some of the facial recognition as we as we walk through this. So, um, anyway, so uh, any questions that you guys might have, please put them into the question box. And uh, after the webinar, uh, try to get those answered for you, uh, either uh, most by email. Since we have so many attendees, uh, it would be difficult to have kind of a back and forth. But uh, I appreciate everyone, uh, everyone attending. So we'll go through some of this. First, talk about if you're not familiar with Oxygen Forensics, uh, we're based out of Alexandria, Virginia, and developing software to extract data from mobile devices, cloud services, uh, drones, IoT devices. Uh, as well. And uh, if you haven't, if you don't have the software, obviously uh, you could pick that up. But uh, let's go and get a little bit about this as we're moving on. So what, what we're going to cover is really, uh, you know, talk about Jet Engine and just really what is it? You know, how can it help you in your investigations? And, uh, you know, if, if you're utilizing uh, Detective currently and you didn't know about uh, Jet Engine that's included in there, uh, that's not uncommon. So hopefully uh, this webinar is going to bring that to light, why you might want to be using it for today's investigation. Then we'll walk through some of the navigation. Uh, really, you know, how do you find Jet Engine? Uh, what, what are some of the things that, that I should be looking for uh, as part of that? And uh, then we'll get into the interface. You know, not we don't have as much time, uh, obviously, needed to go through every uh, nook and cranny of this, uh, but we'll talk about the uh, the interface in itself, how you can at least navigate uh, bringing things in, importing items, as well as uh, even cloud extractions. Then, as part of uh, Jet Engine as well, we'll look at a little bit, I mean, in today's investigations, really what we should be doing is not looking at a device, you know, a single device, or uh, say a you know, a, a single evidence store, but really how can I go in and bolster my investigations with multiple devices, right? Because we're going in and, uh, you know, as part of an investigation, it's not just a single device, but it's uh, obviously multiple devices. And then really, you know, how do I put this together? Uh, you know, how do I, how can I use some of these filters? How can I use some of these tags? How can I go in and use some of these labels? And then obviously exporting this, putting it into a format uh, you know, that uh, as part of the process of the investigation, exporting that as a report uh, and then bringing that to, uh, you know, obviously to those who need to, uh, to, to read the investigation. So let's just, we'll, we'll talk about it again, and don't worry, we'll get into the interface itself, but let's just talk about really what is it. So Jet Engine is built into Oxygen Forensic Detective. So if you do have a, a current license of Detective, it's built in. Uh, it, it's part of that. It's not a. It, it's not a. You don't have to pay for it, right? Uh, and it's it, the reason why. Really, uh, we wanted to put this into our software is because the cases that uh, that we're seeing today. I mean, hundreds of thousands, uh, if not millions, of uh, of pieces or artifacts from multiple sources, multiple devices, and and being able to process through that because uh, you know, as I always say, forensics, the four letter word, right, is time. And so, so being able to uh, really process the, the information, but I'm sure you guys have noticed in some of your, uh, you know, your collections that you have or, or, or other, other, even other tools, right? You, you run out of memory, you get a memory error, right? Uh, and, you know, the program crashes, crashes or it's just it cannot go in and process that information. So it's really built for not only speed, uh, but it allow us now to, you know, go through that information, be able to utilize the resources of uh, of the computer. So now we're now we're talking about the hardware. So you know how many uh, uh, obviously cores that it has, the memory uh, that's being utilized. So now we're able to utilize all this, uh, you know, again hardware to process through uh, that uh, information. So we start talking about today's data sets. Right, um, I, I kind of alluded to it or spoke to it uh, a little bit, is that, you know, just a single device, right? If you start talking about iOS devices uh, and, and just the size of, of, of the information, you know, not only images and pictures, but now, you know, the storage, all the database, uh, all the different applications, you know, those chat and the messengers that, that are built into that. So we look at single devices. 
But now we have to think about really how do I do an investigation over not only multiple devices, but really multiple sources. And what I mean by multiple sources is say, you know, I have four uh, devices, iOS, Android, but then the users also have, have cloud services. So I want to make sure that I can bring all of that information within, uh, you know, a single, a single interface, being able to say, okay, now I can go and I can process and decode this information collectively. Because I'm sure you guys are all aware, but you might have some information that's in a cloud service, say WhatsApp cloud service, that's not available, or Telegram that's not available on the actual device itself. So now you have to have two areas to really process uh, that information, again, under one case. So, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's no longer really de uh, dealing with those individual devices, but now we have the multiple devices as well as, you know, now you might have, you know, hundreds of thousands of images, uh, it's actual pictures or videos uh, throughout this, and then the cloud service and the devices. A lot of tools, I, I mean, the majority of tools that are running into, say, 32-bit, uh, it's just going to uh, run into memory errors. And, I mean, e even Oxygen Princess Detective, you might see that. So, again, that's uh, why we built uh, Jet Engine to be part of, uh, of the product itself. So, really, also, if you're users of Detective as well, exporting, say, creating that report, you know, when you have 30,000 pages of information, that takes a long time. And, you know, again, you might run into issues in export, say, it, it crashing, not able to produce that. So, again, bringing this uh, type of, uh, of tool within our product now helps eliminate that. So, now you're able to go in and export, I mean, again, 30,000, 40,000 uh, uh, pages of data throughout, uh, say, PDF that you that you might want to uh, to to create to give out. Now, granted, thirty thousand pages is probably not a good uh, for an investigation, but hey, you know what? Uh, you, you still can uh, you can do that within this product itself. So again, it allows you as the investigator uh, to 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 not have to worry about the processing because again, time is uh, definitely not on your side. So if we look at some of these little features, we'll talk about import and, and, and parsing. Because uh, with Jet Engine, uh, you're able to import uh, these the files, say, you know, an OFB file that's created from uh, Oxygen Forensic Detective. You're able to import full file systems, say, from Android, iTunes backups from iOS devices. Uh, you're able to bring in, say, U, uh, UFED uh, files uh, to be able to process that information, gray key images that you're able to bring that in. So I just have some stats if you want to look at it because because really the processing and just seeing this uh, is really believing it because you know if we look at this we like to say three times uh, faster than even uh, our own uh, Oxygen Forensic Detective but also to other tools we'll say three times but you'll notice as we as we go into some of these other uh, types of data sets it's actually I mean can get up to nine times uh, as part of the speed but you know, look at this. As we go through, even with an iTunes backup, it's almost a couple gigabytes of being able to process that at almost half the time, uh, it, which, again, helps you as an investigator. Uh, and looking at the file system, just a standard zip or a tar that you bring into that, uh, again, now even that's even better. And, and, I mean, if you look at it and as the events start, uh, uh, you know, start piling up and you have more events, it, it, it seems to do better. Uh, in the processing and decoding of this. Now, some people say, well, great, it's going to extract the, you know, it's going to extract the device itself, uh, being able to process that, or extract some of the cloud uh, side of it. No, we're looking at the processing and decoding of the data, because the extraction can be limited, uh, you know, by the device itself, uh, can be limited by, uh, say, the cloud service itself, uh, so we're we're only basing this on the processing and decoding. So so when you get it, they'll say, hey, it's not extracting the uh, the mobile di device quick enough. Uh, it's again just on the other side, as as we have that. If we look at here with an Android with an ADB uh, backup, that's uh, looking at again with the importing, you'll notice that uh, it stays pretty consistent um, as you have that. Uh, I mean, but again, as we move up in uh, in gigabytes, uh, you know, as well as files, the performance continues uh, to do better and advance uh, as part of that. Again, the input output is uh, is really what we want to look at in that hardware side of it 
of being able to process this information from you. So again, taking the time down, being able to process that information for you is what we are looking to do. So if we look here at some of the physical, uh, physical uh, I I importing uh, of this as well, uh, you'll also notice uh, the time, so I mean, it's pretty considerable as you're bringing in uh, some of these Android uh, file systems that you might have, as well as on the, uh, say, the media side, as well as the video. Uh, video. If you're looking at the different types of, uh, of file systems itself, again, uh, and, and we're just pairing this up against uh, our own uh, detective, Oxygen Forensic Detective. Um, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, with the other tools uh, that might be out and available that, that you do have, you will notice uh, also a considerable amount of speed differences as, as well um, as, you know, the decoding and parsing sides uh, of that. All right. So if, if we look at this, I'm just going to break this down, too, because we're really dealing uh, with, uh, you know, a lot of third-party applications and messaging. If we look at some of these um, as well, so uh, and pulling this down from a, a cloud extraction from Telegram, you know, I mean, that's a lot of messages, right? Uh, if we're looking at that uh, that number and bringing that in and actually importing that and processing that time, I mean, that is a lot of messages. And now we're looking at the import time is it's, it's considerably less than any other uh, tool. Uh, that uh, that is going to conduct some of these uh, uh, extractions uh, for you. If we look here again, another cloud extraction that we have uh, through Telegram as well. Now, I mean, now we're talking over 3 million uh, messages that, that you have here as well, as well as the uh, processing and decoding of that information as well is, again, saving you time uh, to be able to process this information. And also uh, looking at the different types of, uh, of memory or, say, the hardware and resources uh, that you have listed out here below. Because, again, it's, uh, it's all about saving you time and obviously being accurate in the processing of this information. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go jump into this uh, a bit to talk about really and break this down for you as part of the navigation itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can go and share this for you. We'll talk about how to get there um, and then be able to uh, go through some of this. So great. So if we look at this as part of the interface itself, uh, again, this is, if, if you're familiar with it, this is uh, Oxygen Forensic Detective. If you, I'm sure I'll have utilized the tool. So let's talk a little bit about um, how do I go in and how do I access it from Detective itself um, for that. So here, you'll notice right here that we have uh, the interface itself, and I'm just going to put a little magnifier right here. One of two ways that you have um, over, um, we can go right over here into the Tools menu. And I can just launch the uh, jet engine right from here from our tools menu if you wanted to launch that as well. Also here I have on the toolbar, um, also being able to go in and launch jet engine right here from the tool uh, bar as well. Now, uh, something that should be of note uh, is if I go in and say uh, I do a collection, right? Say I have and I'm using our extractor. Uh, directly from Detective itself. If I go in and I'm processing a device, uh, say I connect an iOS device or an Android device to that, and I begin the collection uh, with our Oxygen Forensic uh, e Extractor, at the end of the, uh, the, the collection, it's going to ask if you would like to import that into, uh, into Jet Engine itself uh, or into Detective. You can select there, and it'll import that directly into Jet Engine and be able to process that information for you as well. Another way to, say, access that is simply coming over to your Start button, clicking on your Start button, and then just typing in Jet Engine. You can just type in Jet Engine, and you'll see it pop up. You can now go in and select that and be able to jump directly from that as well and launch the uh, the tool itself. So again, there's many ways uh, that you can get to it. Um, also, you'll notice here as part of our cases, uh, any of these cases here as well, I can select any of uh, uh, the cases itself and I'm able to go in and right click on that and export that uh, device directly to 
um, oxygen forensic jet engine. So that's another way that you can go in and process that directly instead of just say importing the OFB. I can go and export that directly um, from Detective at, uh, itself. So you have those options and those options are available um, to you. So hey, sort of like a cooking show, um, uh, I have already launched Jet Engine and I'll just bring that up. Here's the interface. This is the interface that we have here. And the first thing that we're going to do is you'll notice we have several items over here. We'll talk about these here shortly. But once you launch or you have Jet Engine, let me point out a couple of uh, items that how do I go in and, and how should I set this up? So over in the right hand corner, you'll notice that we have or you're available uh, to go in and just pull this down as part of the setting. You'll notice that we have a couple of items over here uh, as part of this. We're going to go directly into where it says options. Once I select options, it's now going to launch uh, the, say, the options screen. And what you want to do is you'll notice here there's general search, import, contacts, and a project VIC. So right here is part of the general. Once you select general, you'll notice this is pretty important, guys, because it allows me to now select where I want the database to be. Um, and obviously, I can go in and select that uh, to different areas. It also allows me to select the temporary file location. Again, that's very important, especially when we start talking about, you know, putting my temporary, uh, uh, you know, uh, files onto, uh, you know, a, some sort of flash media or, or SSD on another drive, being able to go and utilize that resource instead of having it on, say, the same as the OS or the same that the, uh, where the application is running. And as well as with the temporary files, that's very important to have that not on your operating system uh, or, or say your uh, uh, machine, simply because, you know, obviously if you're doing a sensitive investigation, uh, you do the extractions and it goes to temporary. All the work is, it kind of could go to temporary space, right? And you don't want to have, say, explicit images. You don't want to have that as part of that case as, and because obviously you want to be able to get rid of that information so it's not stored within uh, you know your investigative computer so you can go in and place that where your temporary files so not only speed uh, you know but being able to you know be able to maintain that type of information right here is again like I mentioned with the extraction uh, or for the database itself that's very important for you as well uh, because again now you can put that on a fast uh, you know, a, a fast storage medium uh, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, have it at, uh, you know, operating at the full potential. So again, that's very good for you guys as investigators. So um, it allows us to uh, the same thing if we have with uh, our, our different search as well as the import. Um, so if we look at the import, what it allows you to do here, guys, as well as, as on the import, is it allows you select um, the uh, hash calculations, you could do multiples as part of this as well um, at the same time. It also gives us uh, uh, the options because if you want to go as part of the import process and say you don't want to, uh, you know, recover, uh, you know, deleted data because you want it to be faster. Now, I don't advise that. Obviously, I want to leave these, but it gives you the, the ability to do that if you need for it to process any faster. Uh, so again, it gives you all of those. If you remember on, uh, you know, in Detective as part of, uh, of Extractor, uh, you, you're able to obviously select these items. Now, this is where you go in Jet Engine as part of that selection. Also, um, look at uh, here as part of archives. So being able to go in and say, unpack these as part of the processing, it allows you to select these items. Again, this uh, is just obviously a matter of time, but you know, understand if you're unpacking these, you're able to then search across um, all of those, especially if you had a compressed file that contains some evidence on there, it allows to go in and unpack these types of ar ar archives, but you can go in and select those as part of the examinations uh, or as part of your settings upon import. Um, it also gives it, it here as well as part of the import um, type of items as, as well if uh, you know as, as part of any of these processings as well of other types of, of, of files to ignore as well as has the additional with the drones as well as what we'll talk about later as with the advanced analysis as part of the facial recognition. 
And I'll just mention really quickly, as part of this is a processing, uh, once it's uh, processed into coding, it then goes in and processes the faces um, as part of this. Now, if you wanted to speed it up, or you're not, say, working on, say, the images uh, for that, you know, to, to utilize a facial recognition, uh, you can go ahead and switch that off as part of the import process. And again, that will allow you to, uh, you know, speed up, say, the process of decoding if you were not utilizing, uh, you know, a, a, the investigation that had to do with that um, as well. But again, some, some great settings that allows us to, you know, bring that in, uh, you know, once you're going in, once we're processing that information on there. All right, so very good. Excellent. So let's go ahead and look at the main dashboard right now, just simply hitting the home or the little house uh, icon that you have here. So it's broken down into a couple of items. Uh, our common task, which you, you are pretty familiar with, I'm sure, with detectives, is that you can create a new case. Uh, you know, identifying that, creating that new case so that you can begin importing data into that as well as part of that. Uh, so adding a new case is as simple as just uh, going in and creating a new case. You can then go ahead and import direct backups or go directly to our cloud extractor. Now, as we progress, uh, obviously we'll be adding, uh, you know, being able to have, say, a live collection um, as part of that as well. But it gives you that ability uh, to set it directly into here. Okay, let's go back to the home as well. As well as a backup import, this is, uh, you know, obviously if you're familiar with our Oxygen Forensic Extractor, um, able to go in and import, uh, say, an OB file uh, into the product itself. I can simply select this. It can walk me through um, just selecting. Obviously, it has all the different types of support that you can go in and select. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that importing as part of uh, Oxygen Forensic Detective. All right. So again, that's uh, how we can import that. Now, again, we have our in the import uh, menu as well, allowing us to import, uh, you know, different Apple uh, types. You know, obviously having the iTunes backup. Uh, being able to import, say, uh, the file system tarballs or compressed zips that you would have, as well as gray key extraction. Being able to, you know, after you have performed the gray key uh, extraction on that iOS device, being able to now import that directly. And I will tell you guys, if you're utilizing gray key, uh, just please bring it into Jet Engine and process that. You'll be amazed um, at not only the speed, but now the process and decoding and the OS artifacts. Um, that can now be, uh, you know, shown to you in here. It's amazing. Um, and then moving over here to Android, these are the current uh, supported import functions. Being able to do, you know, bring in, say, a physical extraction of that, aka like a JTAG, chip off, um, ISP, those types of binaries, uh, bringing that information in, as well as the same as we had with iOS device, with file systems. Uh, you know, say if you, yeah, another tool, you're able to zip that up, uh, into, uh, you know, into an archive file, you can then import that information uh, directly into Jet Engine as well. Uh, the standard ADB, uh, like a .ab, you can bring that in here as well as some additional, uh, say, third-party tools as part of their backups um, as well that you're able to, uh, again, import these. And again, we keep on adding additional uh, 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 import uh, types within to our tool every release. Uh, if we look at this right here, these are just, uh, say, our proprietary uh, formats that we would have, uh, that we would have with our cloud backup, which just comes from our cloud extractor as well. Our OFB file, uh, again, which is our proprietary format. And then we have with our ODB, if you are not familiar with that and didn't see uh, some of the other webinars, that would be uh, those that are produced with our Oxygen Forensic Key Scout. Uh, Key Scout, uh, really quickly, is a tool that allows uh, us to extract data off a desktop, a Windows desktop, to get credentials, tokens, uh, as well as uh, some artifacts, some Internet artifacts. So you're able to go in and now import so that ODB file and be able to process that stuff directly into Jet Engine as well. Um, also, with the support of our drones, uh, being able to you know process that information um, as a part of the drones itself uh, and again just bringing in the log files itself uh, we have both DJI and Parrot that are uh, that uh, you're able to bring in as well as a desktop 
uh, for DGI. So again, very versatile on part of the importing. You'll be pleased to know as well that uh, uh, Oxygen Forensic Cloud Extractor is also uh, built into here with uh, high performance uh, that you're able to go in and uh, run a Cloud Extractor directly from the interface here. And like I had mentioned before, you can go right here to Key Scout and be able to add that to a removable media and then go in and run that agent on a uh, Windows desk desktop to now extract uh, the uh, cloud tokens, passwords, as well as application data, as well as internet artifacts. You can go in and launch that and put it onto removable media. Also, Oxygen Forensic Maps, you can go in and launch that directly from Jet Engine as well. Uh, just uh, You can obviously uh, start a case and in Maps be able to import KML files that you might have exported from other tools, um, as well as bring in, say, uh, you know, your DJI, your logs. Um, as well as additional information. Also, Oxygen Forensic SQL Light Viewer will be new and improved here in the next release, but it's also included here within Jet Engine, uh, being able to uh, launch this directly from here, as well as our P List Viewer. So we have all of that information directly from uh, directly from the interface, uh, being able to parse through um, P list or property list from iOS devices, as well as a SQLite from you know those unsupported apps that you might run into uh, from iOS, Android, or other sources. So that's kind of the main dashboard. Really easy to uh, to navigate through that. So let's take a look at the devices and the device tree. You'll notice right here the little hamburger. It allows me to select that and it'll slide out. You'll notice uh, that we have uh, quite a few, uh, say, cases that are listed out over here um, that are listed. Uh, so obviously here's with the gray key uh, extraction as well, as well as uh, I'm just going to go, we have our human trafficking case. So obviously, like, like Detective, we have multiple cases um, that are located in here. Just like selecting um, before, and the navigation is part of the device uh, tree, if I go to the, say, cases level, the same thing. Now it's a little bit different, right? It gives me the three extractions that you might have, a little bit of details about the extraction. But now again, it gives us the ability to do the analytics across the case, just like you guys are familiar with in Oxygen Forensic Detective, with our timeline, our social graph, searching key evidence. The contacts in itself is a new and improved, say, really aggregated contacts. Uh, being able to take all of the contacts, uh, showing all of the different types of applications, um, that, uh, that that they might have across those, being able to go and merge and say unmerge or show merged um, contacts within that, just like you're familiar with um, as part of that, as well as being able to show all the files as part of that case itself. So very, very powerful bringing all this information together. And I will, we'll, we'll kind of walk through um, a little bit of that as part of the analytics here shortly. Okay, uh, as you guys are all familiar with as well, as part of these cases themselves, say this gray key is an individual extraction. So you'll notice, kind of like detective that you would have or other tools indicating, uh, obviously we have a logical or we have, uh, say, a, a file uh, or, or, excuse me, a uh, some evidence uh, is, that's in green, that's good, right? Uh, in red, showing that's deleted um, as part of this, as part of the extraction itself as we go through, as well as this OS artifacts. The OS artifacts contains great information. If I simply select that, you know, now we're talking about all these different types of categories that you have. You know, applications. Hey, you know what? Tell me about the applications. What have they been installed? Simply selecting that, you know, now I'm getting all of these items with the installation that you might have as part of this as well, as well as additional phone information uh, that's completely built out for you um, as an investigator. So again, very, very good, fantastic uh, details that we have as part of these sections. Again, bringing that information into you or in for you uh, is, uh, is extremely important as we go through that. So you'll notice um, now also that we might have, or, or as part of these same messages, our messages section has changed a bit um, that you would have with, uh, uh, with the Jet Engine. Simply selecting, say, the messages area, you now have, you'll notice, we have all of these other different types, right, that can be located directly into the filters. Jet Engine, like Detective, is built on a lot of filters. So it allows us to come right into these different filters, be able to select uh, different accounts, 
be able to now go and say, hey, only show me um, as part of these with the Apple messages, only show me the email, only show me Facebook Messenger or Line. So again, it allows you to filter that. If you recall a detective, uh, you know, you just as part of the say iMessage or SMS and MMS, but now we're bringing in obviously third-party messaging tools directly into our messages view, which again allows you now to create threads, be able to go in and you know show communication between multiple people using multiple types or sources, right? So now we're able to go in and filter out a lot of this information, right? We have all of this information that's built out, all of this as part of this uh, section. So again, very powerful. Again, bring that into Jet Engine because we know you might have thousands and thousands of, of messages uh, or you know hundreds of thousands of messages from multiple sources and now you have them in one area, one place where you can go ahead and be able to grab this information uh, in one view. So again, very important that uh, that we bring that to you guys to allow for you know obviously being able to um, gather this information, whether to put this uh, together as as part of uh, the reporting features that you might want to look into. The application section is obviously similar that you that we have here as well as bringing in all the applications. Uh, that might be on or extracted from this particular device itself. Uh, so you're familiar with those, I'm sure of that as well. You'll notice also as part of that we have, um, you know, this search function is still here and available. And the best part about the search, guys, it is incredibly fast. Incredibly fast being able to search as part of, say, you might want to search as, a, with a, this is searched as part of uh, hash sets. Uh, you can do and build the keyword um, searches um, that you have as well. Being able, again, to search within parse data, which in the files, as well as file content throughout all of this information. And because of the architecture that's built within Jet Engine, your searches, which, which is the most important part of an investigation or how you should start it, is extremely fast and it allows you to do so many great things as part of uh, searching across the case or searching a, a across just an individual device itself. So again, very good, very good information that you might have here as well. But again, you'll you'll be familiar with a lot of these uh, these items. Obviously, the views have changed a little bit. So it might take a little bit to get uh, you know obviously used to to some and some of the navigation. But hey, guys, it's built in. You should be utilizing this as much as possible for all of your investigations, right? As you go through, as we bring some of these things together for you. Again, the accounts and passwords, all this uh, additional information that you guys might have and might need as, uh, as part of that. So let's take a look at some other items, say, uh, say collectively, that, uh, that we might have. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to minimize this one right here. Take a look at, say, this human trafficking, uh, the case that we have listed out over here. All right, so I open up the human trafficking case. I simply want to select that, or let's take a look. What is the what, what are the analytics? What are some of the things you know that I need to really have some speed? Because you know we're talking about multiple devices, and if you guys have ran say the social graph um, within uh, say oxygen frenzy detective, you're like, wow, man, I have a lot of uh, devices in there, but you know it seems to be it kind of works slow. But it's now if we come over here directly to the social graph as part of this, select social graph. Now, if we start looking at, at this, look at how quick um, that is as part of this uh, investigation. So now, so now, you know, as we're going through, we have all of this information that's listed out, right? I have all this information that's listed out with obviously the device owners themselves, with the device owners themselves that are all listed. But you'll notice here as well, it's, it's a lot easier um, to now go in and show, obviously, I have the common contacts. Uh, as well as now I say have unique contacts uh, that might be listed here as well. So common contacts that uh, are listed. I now have, you'll notice, different sources. So I can get rid of all the sources. Say I only wanted to do the investigation as part of, of, of say, uh, you know, a WhatsApp uh, or a line investigation. I can go and unselect all these different sources, simply unselect all the sources. I can go directly into, say, a line investigation as part of that, um, as well as any other messages. So now you're really dialing in and what you need to know. 
So now I can come down. I've really brought this stuff down, and now I have an individual. I have an individual that I can go in and select this individual, right? So I have this individual, and now we have all the event info that you guys I'm, are familiar with, I'm sure, and telling you what types of devices that it came from. This contact, obviously, through all of these um, different types of messages. You'll notice you can immediately identify this as key evidence or bookmark this as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of these tags here shortly. So again, you have all the information available to you. You also have any of this type of, of say, from the messages. And I can go directly to the source of that. Remember, guys, just that's probably one of the best things that, uh, that Oxygen can do for you is it takes you to the information so that when you can verify that information, you can have that information available to you. I can still go ahead and select the contact card just like we did before. I now have the contact card or that's listed out over here. It has all the different types of information and you'll notice it now gives me all of the data that's needed um, for this individual right from here. You'll also notice we go and create tabs for you. So you can go directly back to where we were in this social graph. So now you have that information. No need to hit the back arrow. All that information is available for you and opened up as part of this tool. So again, uh, taking the information for you as an investigator and taking it down and giving you the information quickly and in a way that you can obviously make sense of that. Now again, now look at this. All the different sources that we have is tied to this one individual. Immediately we get that information, guys. So, so that's what we try to do for you at Oxygen is, again, uh, obviously trying to make the world a safer place, but giving you tools that are going to help you um, to gather that. So let's take a, just take a look at some of the additional information that you might have. Because I mentioned kind of like we have bookmarks and we have the tags. So as part of this, guys, um, we have, obviously I explained bookmarks, but we have also tags. You can come right here and you can mark these immediately as say import, uh, important or of interest for this individual right here. Um, you can go in and create tags as well that you might have. And once I apply that, what's nice is you'll notice now we have these different tags. And I can go now and filter as part of that within the views as part of the tags that you might have. Just like if I came in here to this additional, say, this gray key extraction, I can come directly to, uh, you know, obviously a lot of these. I can say, okay, fantastic. You know what? Uh, you know, if I'm going to come over here and uh, I'm going to add a tag uh, because, uh, you know, hey, that's private, uh, perfect, excellent. I have that. Now, see, you'll notice I have a tag as part of that. You can go like everything else, guys. I can go in and filter and only show those and now only report on that information. So now if you're adding tags, you can go and export that information directly from um, here, creating reports directly from uh, any of these sections or any of these views by being able to now go in and create that important information. So not only bookmarks, but now again with the tags itself. Now the tags are, are, will allow you to, you know, especially if you, know, if you identify or you created a tag of, of an event, right, or a case or a report. You know, you want to identify all of those that are associated to say this crime. You know, we call them DR numbers, you know, department of report numbers. You want to go and associate that as part of that. Okay, that's involved there. Now you can go in and completely filter as part of that just by the tags that you've added to it um, as well. So again, bookmarking and reporting, extremely important for you um, as, a, uh, as an investigator. So let's talk quickly um, about kind of the reports. You know, how do I go ahead and how do I go create reports? Well, just like, uh, you know, you had before as well, say if you had an individual device itself, You'll notice right here, I can come directly over here and export the information by simply selecting export. You'll notice that we have now with the export selections, just kind of familiar that you might have um, with that as well, right? It gives us the ability to go in and export that. We can select all the different items that I want. You'll also notice that we have the same thing with our common sections, allowing you to go in and create these as well. You'll also notice that we have here date filters. Being able to select a date range, and now I only want to create a report within that date range that you might have, right? Or multiple date ranges because you can add a new filter. So I can have, say you had a crime that occurred this date, this, or say this month, this month, this month, and it's separated. You can go and create those as part of 
the filter itself. So now you're not just going in and saying, hey, now I need to filter out all this data. I need to export these individual. I can do this at the case level that you have as part of this um, to only export that information as part of the, uh, the date filter itself, right? So again, very powerful, allows you to filter out the information. The different formats, you'll say that we currently support in Jet Engine. You'll look at it, kind of the same once, but you'll notice a new one that's coming here in this next release uh, as part of the plugin uh, with Relativity. So if you're in and, and utilizing Relativity or uh, Export, you can now export it into that format and you'll also, in part of the settings, be able to kind of uh, uh, put the settings that you need, uh, delimiters and things like that as part of the export. Once we have that, everything's pretty much the same as exporting these items that you might have here. Uh, export it as a separate file, export all of the files themselves, and you are ready to go. So, again, very powerful, guys, that you might have. But let's talk about uh, the uh, addition of our facial recognition and it's only it's only uh, going to be included or it's only within jet engine so you'll have to utilize jet engine as part of that but again it's included guys so if you do own oxygen principle detective it's part of your license uh, so it's not anything extra you do not have to pay extra for that which again is extremely important so if we look at all of these you'll notice there's a new section that's added so when you process the data you get a new section called faces and the faces that are listed out over here right here that's the section that is listed out over so I'm just going to click on say the faces and that's part of the processing that you have there so you'll notice right here um, we have different sources we have different sources so it's not just from the media guys it's not from the media uh, that's uh, you know it uh, videos or, or images that might be on the DCIM uh, area but this is going through all the files it's going through now all the applications and looking for those images as well as anything else, right? So let me talk a little bit about that. So these are all of our filters. We have the different sources that are listed out. We also have now, we start talking about gender, being able to now and, and say, hey, only show me those identified as females, only show me identified as males. Also now we can filter by race. Being able to say, hey, see if the crime had occurred and, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, you're looking for a particular race. You're able to go in and select these as part of the, uh, the extraction to be able to say, hey, only identify that um, to show you that data. Again, filtering out the information. It also gives you age, being able to filter out a certain age. Now, granted, guys. You know, you want to go, uh, you know, a couple ahead and a couple below if you're looking at a specific age, just to make sure the confidence level, uh, you know, is going to be able to grab that information out. You'll also notice here, as it gives us our confidence level, as well as the quality of it, and it identifies an age or guesstimates an age, and gives you these types of filters, as well as an emotion. How cool is that as part of the filter to show, hey, only show me those angry pictures, right? Only show me those joy pictures, sadness. And all of those can be listed out for you as well. So let me jump into another image and we'll talk about some of those, uh, those pictures that you might have or that you're looking at as part of your investigation. So I'm just going to jump down here towards the bottom that I have with some unassigned extractions that are listed. I have right here two things. Um, I have just a imported DCIM folder and faces. So let's select these and we'll talk a little bit more about what this means to you. You'll notice right here, identify and listen as for the details. Here's the identified picture. Tells me there's, hey, 64 images. So we're going to talk about templates. As part of your license, you get 20,000 uh, templates and that's really faces. And that can be the same face but just a different profile that you would have as part of your license as well as one core, two threats be able to process that. So as, as part of this and identify it, we have this uh, particular uh, picture. If you select it, it gives you the entire picture that's listed out, that's listed out right here, um, and the identified face itself and another identified face. Okay, so if we look at this now, we have now the identified faces, and you're going to be able to set the threshold, saying, hey, show me with the confidence level. Obviously, this tells me this is identical, the identical um, uh, picture that it was taken from. But now we have additional ones that say, hey, 99. That's pretty darn good to identify. Um, and a completely a different picture and different pictures as we have with the identification, uh, multiple pictures that you have. 
also with headgear, um, also with pictures that are kind of pixelated. We're still at 99% um, uh, uh, on the confidence level, or 99, uh, uh, looking at that. You'll notice that we have here, these are called identified faces. Those will be with a threshold that is set for you. Here we have it set uh, relatively high at 99. Obviously, we have some at 98 that are identified. We have glasses that are listed out over here. We have low light that still we're looking at a pretty high confidence level, as well as another uh, image that's listed out over here. We also have, uh, again, again, a smaller picture that's listed out over here, even at low light. Uh, that you might look. So we're not talking about full-on pictures. We're just talking about profiles uh, that might be listed um, in here as well, right? So now we also have what's called similar images, and those would be the images that are based on a threshold that are under what you set as Paul identified uh, faces. Still at 87, being a profile that's listed out over here as well. Also, again, with sunglasses, still at 70 uh, percent, very, very high. Um, on that as well. So you're able to go now in and tailor and look at some of these images that might be close um, to obviously, uh, you know, the threshold. It still allows you to look and say, boom, yeah, that is the same person. That's listed out over here. I can select it. But it also gives you, you'll notice right here, the file path. You can go directly to where that image was located, you know, as, as part of that as well. So you can go directly into that. Again, very, very important for you as an investigator. A couple other items. If we look at some of these uh, you know, similar, uh, similar images uh, as, as part of this as well, right? We have all of these others. So let's look at another one. So if I select uh, this uh, 13 images that are listed over here, we have 13 identified faces that are pretty high confidence level um, as part of our filter that's listed out over here. Now you'll notice we have additional items down here. Look at completely, it's still 88%, even with some of the partial faces with costume um, that's being, uh, that, that's obviously, that's war over here. You'll also notice here, check this one out. This one here, it might be low confidence, but if we check this out, this entire picture, you'll notice this is actually 15 or 16 years old, still identifying um, the individual, you know, as, I mean, that, that, that was a while ago. Still giving you, I mean, it's not quite 50%, but still you're able as an investigator to say, wow, that's an older picture. So you can still do some more investigation as part of that. All right. Also, the last one I'm going to point out to here is this. It allows me here, right here, this is actually a picture. It's actually a reflection, a reflection in a mirror, and it still has an almost a 50% of confidence level um, as part of that. Very, very low light, and it's a reflection in a mirror. So the very powerful, very fast as part of the processing. And again, what I meant by templates as part of that, if you have multiple uh, uh, you know, individuals in, say, a, an image, right? If I have this image here, this would be count as one, two templates, and three identified as part of this picture. You know, as part of the product, uh, again, you get 20,000 um, of those, which is, which is pretty high as part of that, as well as, again, two threads. Now, you can obtain uh, additional uh, templates as well as threads uh, if, uh, say, your case uh, desires or you do need that as part of it. But, again, this is available for free within our product um, for you guys uh, to actually be able to utilize. So, so make sure that, uh, you know, you, you get on. If you do not have Detective, please get on and, and look for that and test this product out as well. So I'm going to jump back into the, the, the PowerPoint really quick just to kind of talk about some use cases um, that, that we might be, you know, talking about as part of the, uh, the investigation. Um, so if we look at that, uh, I, I talked about some of these other items, but let's talk about the use cases because that's pretty important. Let's think about this, guys. So, so obviously, the easy one, you know, is, is they have multiple or suspects that as part of this investigation, and I'm utilizing the facial recognition to, you know, identify, you know, as part of that. Uh, say you have a group of, of, of subjects, and the guy says, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, never met this person before. You know, you, you have extractions from multiple devices, and you're able to say, boom, okay, here's this picture right here. Yep, I'm confident that it's this person, but they said they never met this other individual. So that's actually pretty easy, right, to think about that as part of your investigation. But let's start talking about, say, witnesses. 
right? Say it's a large event, a terrorist attack. Say it's something that bad has happened, and you're now taking all of these phones um, from these. I mean, think of phones, right? They're just a walking, uh, you know, CCTVs. Um, all over the place. So now you as an investigator, as all this large police forces, you're dumping all these devices. You have to run it through a product, and now you're going through all of these pictures trying to find this individual. Now look at this. You're able to actually add and look at a picture. I can find that individual, and now run that across multiple devices to identify that. That's, as again, as a witness phone. So we're not just talking about that. So now with 400 phones, you're able to process that down, the information, and find out the individual within those videos that you're looking for. You know, in, in I mean, we're talking minutes. Uh, instead of going in and going through and looking frame by frame by frame or looking through each of these, this is extremely powerful. That goes the same thing with bystanders, that I just kind of put the witnesses and bystanders in together. You know, all this information is there um, as, as part of the, the, the processing. Again, like I said, people are walking around with just, you know, video cameras, uh, you know, in their pockets and their video events, even though, you know, maybe the crime hasn't occurred, you know, uh, but they come back to this and, you know, the event happens. And now they're seizing or they say, hey, anybody in the area, bring your phone to us so that we can extract it. Now that saves time, right? You can, you can extract that information directly into Oxygen Forensic Detective, be able to process that information here, give them the phone back um, directly as part of the media. You don't have to do a full extraction, especially if it's only the, uh, the images and the videos uh, that you're looking for as, say, a witness or a bystander. You can dump that directly um, in as, as part of just a media folder, DCIM type folder, be able to process that information directly into detective, and now you have the evidence that you need as part of uh, this collection. So the, really, the, the use cases for this type of technology is really endless um, that you guys might, uh, you know, might even think of uh, ones that I haven't mentioned. I'm sure that you will. But being able to go in and even a CCTV feed, bring in a CCTV feed, um, that's obviously a video, break those down frame by frame, and you know, 12 hours of video, you're able to identify that person in every single one of the frames. You don't have to sit and watch the 12 hours of video um, to go in and grab it. So again, I'm really excited about this, uh, uh, this feature that we have, along with additional features that are coming out um, in 11.5, which this week, early next week, that we will have that out to you guys who are uh, obviously current users uh, that are uh, utilizing Oxygen Forensic Detective. So one thing that I want to, obviously, um, I want to thank every one of uh, you for attending uh, this, this webinar. Uh, thank you uh, for, uh, you know, for, for what you do for uh, making this world a safer place. And if you do have questions, guys, please put them in the question box. Um, I'm going to leave this open just for a little while longer. If you have placed some, uh, some questions into that, um, I'll make sure that uh, we can get to those, get you an, an email response to those. But like I said, if you do have questions, go ahead and uh, feel free to ask those, and uh, I'll make sure that we can get those answered. Again, I thank you guys uh, for your time, and have a good rest of your day.